It is a nice cold morning out in the mountains. Just got up. It's probably about zero degrees Fahrenheit, I would say. Um, I don't know, I can't feel my hands or my fingers. So today I am headed out on a eight day backpacking trip. Should be really nice. The conditions where I'm actually going is down in that river valley. There's mountains on all sides here. You kind of see one up there, but I just got encapsulated in this cloud. But I was gonna go over my regular morning routine, kind of how I get prepared for the day, which sets me in a good straight line to do good creative and physical work during the day, so I don't get off on tangents. But it's really helped me to get a lot of work done efficiently over the past few years. I've been using this specific morning routine for about three years now, and I find that when I don't do it, I get lazy throughout the day. So I'll lay it out, I'll show you guys what it's all about. My name is Dave Morrow. Nine months of each year, I live out of my vehicle. I travel the wilderness by foot on an endless backpacking and landscape photography trip. I want to teach and share the photography and outdoor skills that I use on these trips. I don't want to spend hours editing video or sitting in front of a computer, so I made some rules. First, everything's shot on GoPro. This was the best way I found to record quickly on a consistent basis. Second, I can only spend 20 minutes editing each video. So thanks for watching and welcome to the Landscape Photography Journals. So this is a pretty standard morning for me before I head out on the trail uh, for a backpacking trip. Headed into that river valley down there. Looks nice and cold this morning, later today, but I make coffee, I read a book. I always have this back hatch open no matter how cold it is because I'm in a warm bag, so it's almost just like being in a tent. So I can look out over a really nice landscape. I always try to back up to like an inspirational place I can kind of look out and have ideas on in the morning, places I want to visit, places I want to hike. Uh, then after that, I do Headspace, which is a mindfulness app, so it helps you to train your brain Basically not to listen to all the thoughts that you have all the time. It allows you to take a step back from your thoughts and watch your thoughts and kind of analyze why you're having specific thoughts and if they are good or bad and if they can help you out or not. So I do that for 20 minutes every morning. It's called Headspace. Highly recommend it. Everybody I've recommended it to likes it. After that, I write in my journal. I give myself a few particular goals for the day. Even if I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, I give myself a few goals. Because then at the end of the day, I'm kind of cranking through those and I feel a positive aspect to the day, no matter what, if I had a few goals to accomplish. You can have goals anywhere you are. Um, I like to have them throughout the day, especially when I'm in the middle of nowhere. After that, I read what are called daily affirmations. So I have this list of things that I'm currently working on in my life. Uh, could be projects, creative, mental, personal, uh, physical, like running and stuff like that. I have a list of a few different projects that I'm doing, why I'm doing that project, my outcome of that project, and basically my wildest success story for that project. It could be a crazy success story that I don't think is possible, but if I read through that list every single morning, I start to brainwash myself that even things that I think are impossible are possible, and I actually think it works because everything on that list, which is constantly changing as I complete projects, I've accomplished and it's worked 100% okay. I've done that since I quit my full-time six-figure job about three and a half years ago, and I was kind of scared to do that. So I figured if I had this list to read through every day to help brainwash myself that everything would be okay, then everything would be okay. Um, so it's a combination of having goals, hard work, and reading those daily affirmations every morning that I've kind of brainwashed myself to be able to do whatever I want to be able to do at the current time. So that's how I start every morning, uh, along with drinking lots and lots of coffee. So the next thing I do is a visualization technique. I take five minutes and I basically sit down, I close my eyes and I envision everything that I wanna do this specific day. So I just go through kind of mentally what I'm gonna do that day and I envision the best possible outcome for every scenario, basically how I, exactly how I want it to turn out. Then I do that for the whole week the whole month, three months, six months, a year. And it's really quick. So I'm just kind of like scrolling through, laying out my day, week, month, year. And if I do that every morning, I'm kind of just ingraining into my brain how I want things to turn out for that year. Now, if they don't turn out that way, I don't kill myself over it. 
But if I can envision them turning out that way, I think there's a better chance overall that I will direct myself to things turning out that way. Of course, you can't do that without working hard at them and having a goal or a plan that you set in place and work at every day. Um, and then after that, I think of three things which I'm grateful for at the current time. Because I find that if I'm not thinking about things which I'm grateful for now, I don't really enjoy what I'm currently doing now or I don't ever appreciate it as much. And that kind of keeps my happiness level or my motivation level up because I know no matter what, I have things that I like now. But I also want to work for things that I have goals of accomplishing later on in life or even this week, today, so on and so forth. And I found that when I do this stuff, I always do it out loud. So I always just sit down and I say this stuff out loud because if I hear myself saying it, it almost ingrains it into my head even more. I'm weird, but if you want to sit in a room and be weird like me, it might help you out. I'm not sure. So the next thing I do, I know this seems like a lot of stuff to do every morning, but it helps me out. It takes me about an hour every morning to kind of go through this routine and get set. And it puts me in like a really positive attitude and it gets me pumped up for the day. But the next thing I do is called The One Thing. I got this from a book called The One Thing. But I basically decide one specific thing that if I get that done during the day, that my day will feel a sense of accomplishment. So I could have all this list of things that I think are important. I have to pick the most important thing. And I do that in my first two hour chunk of work. If I get that thing done, even if I get stuck doing other stuff that I didn't plan on the rest of the day, if I get that one thing done, as those add up over years and decades and so on and so forth, then I will have a lot of those one things done, which will build up to a massive overall foundation, which I can kind of have a stable ground on. So I pick the one thing, I make sure to do that first. If I'm out backpacking, the one thing could just be like, cover 10 miles of trail, get to this location, get a shot of this specific thing. And then I'm aiming for that one specific thing all day and my brain's not jittery wondering what I should be doing. It has one thing at least to go for. And then when I'm at home, when I'm getting ready to get up and do creative work, like edit photos, edit videos and stuff like that in the morning, I like to wake up really early, like five o'clock, definitely before the sun comes up. I'll do that same morning routine as I did or just went through here, but then I'll just get up and do writing in like two hour chunks of times. So I really like this concept laid out by an author named Cal Newport called Deep Work. So in short, you take two hour chunks of time or two and a half hour chunks of time and you turn off all outside contact, phone, email, anything else that might bother you, internet, and you just sit down and you work on a hard problem, something that's hard mentally, hard physically, whatever you want it to be in your mind for that two and a half hour chunk of time. And even if you feel like you want to stop and get up and go do something else, you just work on that thing for two and a half hours. And then I normally do that two to three times throughout the day with half an hour breaks in between. During that half an hour break, I'll grab a coffee, I'll read something I've been wanting to read, I'll have lunch, or I'll take an hour break and go for like a six or eight mile run. But by the end of the day, if I did two of those chunks, I did five hours of what's called deep work. That means I took five hours and I really just dedicated myself to want something I wanted to get done. So at the end of the week, I have 25 hours of work that I truly devoted to something instead of just jumping around to all these meaningless small little tasks. So I get a whole lot done doing that. So that's kind of the way I go about just getting things done when I'm either out here backpacking and doing photography trips or I'm at home doing creative work.